Hello and welcome. In today's video I will show you how to correctly manage the configuration of the app. I will also show you one very useful technique related to environment variables. As usual, you can find the link to the source code in the description of the video. So, without any further ado, let's get started. In Node.js ecosystem, it's very common practice to store the configuration variables in files called .env. We can store a list of key value pars in those files. I have prepared a short list of variables used by our app so far. There is a port number as well as database settings like password or username and so on. Nothing so much fancy here. The problem is how we can access values from .env file in our code and how to parse them to required types. As usual, Nest.js helps us with a ready-to-go solution. For config management, there is a package called nestjs config. Let's install it. Please type npm install at nestjs config. After successful installation, let's open the main module of the app. Here, you can see the array of imported modules. Let's add the config module at the first position in the array. Config module follows the Nest.js conventions. For the setup, it exposes the forRoot method. The forRoot method of the config module parses the .env file and makes it available for dependency injection. I would like to make it available for all of the modules, so I will use the isGlobal flag. Now, if there is a need of accessing the config in any provider, we can inject it through the constructor. The framework will resolve this dependency for us. Ok, but that was only a small example. We don't need the config here. Actually, we need the config inside the main TS file. Let's open it. Currently, in the main TS, we're only bootstrapping the app and setting the validation pipe. The port of the app is hardcoded in the code. That's bad approach. We should be able to change it dynamically. Uh, for the main function, the injection works slightly different. There is no constructor to inject the service. We have to use the get method of the app module. As the input parameter, we have to pass the config service. And that's it. Now we can use it. The config service has a get method exported. It basically returns a value from the .env file. As input, we have to pass the key of the property we want to access. Here it's called app port. But that's not enough. The port has any type now. To make it number, we have to narrow the type in the get method. Now it's considered the number by a TypeScript. Lastly, let's change the hardcoded port with the one coming from the env variable. Cool, let's check if it works. For that, let's open the terminal and type docker compose app. This will fire up the database. Next, open a new terminal window and type npm run start colon dev. This will start the app. Great, app has started with no errors. Before we will move on, one small thing you should be aware of. When you change some value in the .env file, you have to restart the app. Nest.js hot reloading won't work. The values from the env file are cached during the bootstrap and they don't change over the time when application is running. Also, we shouldn't add the .env files to the git tracking in production systems. It's rather a bad practice because we can leak some secret variables here. Moving back to code, let's open the app module. There, inside the imports array, you can see the configuration of the type ORM. So far, it's also hard-coded. That's another bad code smell. We have to refactor it. The type ORM module has another useful method exported. It's called forroot async and we have to use it now. There is no option for using the synchronous config of the ORM together with a config module. The config has to be resolved first by the Nest.js and then it can be injected somewhere else in the code. Inside the forroot async method, we have to tell framework to inject the config service and then we can use the factory method for creating the config. Inside the use factory method, we can inject the config service. Let's recreate the structure of a type ORM config, but this time using env variables. I don't expect changing the type of the DB, but the next one, the host, 
Here I will use the get method of the config service and again I will provide the name from the .env file. To not make you bored, I have prepared the full config before the lesson. Now you can see it in the full. The idea is simple. I changed all of the string values to the values read from our config service. Important, don't forget to include your entities in the type rm config. Let's delete the old synchronous type rm config and let's save the file. Cool, the app is still running and there are no errors. Great, now we know how to use the config service. But before we will end up today, I would like to teach you one more important technique. It's commonly used in enterprises projects. Let's imagine that for some reason you have forgotten to set some value inside the .env file. The app will work, but the value of the variable will be undefined. It can lead to unexpected behaviors of the app. For that reason, it's a good practice to validate the provided values and don't start the app if something is missing. So for that, let's create a new directory and call it config. Inside it, let's create the file called nvvalidation.ts. Before the lesson, I have prepared the class called environment variables. It has the exact same keys as the .env file has, even if in TypeScript we have another naming conventions. Class fields have to be named as in .env file, the end. Then I have used the class validator decorators to set my expectations. If you don't know the class validator yet, here is my another video teaching you how to use it. The environment variable class will help us in the implementation of validate method. The method takes as an input the TypeScript record object. Firstly, I will use the plain to instance method of the class transformer package. It will transform the config record to our environment variable class. We have to pass here the type of the destination class and the object we want to transform. I will also use the option called enable implicit conversion. This flag tells the class transformer that it should cast types to the types from the destination class. Next, I will use the validate sync method of the class validator package and I will assign the potential errors to a variable. The validate sync method checks if all constraints are fulfilled based on the provided decorators. If not, it will return an array of errors. So, if the method has detected some missing values, we have to throw an error to prevent up before starting. Finally, when there are no errors, let's simply return the validated config. The last thing to do is to use this method. For that, we should pass it to the config modules for root method. I named my method exactly the same as NestJS expected, so I can use the shorthand here. To test it out, let's comment some of the variables in the .env file. Then, let's stop the server and start it again. Yes, as you can see, the app hasn't started. There is a validation error inside the console. Great! If we restore the values and restart the app, then the application is working again. Great! That's it for today. In this lesson, you have learned how to manage the environment variables. You have also learned the technique of configuration validation. Great job! In the next lesson, we will go back to the type ORM and we will learn how to get rid of the synchronized flag and how to create a good database migrations. So stay tuned. Meanwhile, thank you for the watching and see you next time.